In creating a desirable future, we must never cease to imagine new realities for ourselves, affirming ourselves to living a healthy, joyful, moral, and intentional life. Hi there. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. In today's show, searching for and destroying public enemy number one, the mosquitoes that pose a threat to our health, plus training opportunities for a career in aviation. And later, some of the week's top news stories. Stay with us for these and more coming up right after these messages. Don't make diseases spread. Wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer. Make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose Wash your hands before you do things like those After you use the bathroom before preparing food Come on, wash your hands them clean the Aedes aegypti is one of several types of mosquitoes found here in Jamaica and elsewhere in the world. Know them. They are small, dark mosquitoes with white lyre-shaped markings and banded legs. The Aedes aegypti mosquito lives in and around places where people gather and breeds anywhere water settles, such as artificial containers in and around homes and other buildings. It's a vector that transmits the virus that causes a number of diseases, such as dengue, chick V, and the Zika virus. Find them. Destroy them. Cover water containers to prevent mosquitoes getting inside. Dispose of garbage containers to prevent water settling in them. And frequently check and empty any container that water might settle to ensure these are kept dry and scrub vessels clean to get rid of eggs. The Aedes aegypti mosquito, don't give it a home. From dengue to chikungunya to Zika, the reasons for attacking mosquito breeding are many and urgent. Up next, we bring you the first in a two-part field exercise to identify and eradicate the breeding sites of these pesky disease carriers. Mosquitoes are undoubtedly annoying with their irritating sound and stinging bite. But there are more compelling reasons we'd rather not have them around. Several species are carriers of diseases and a threat to human health. Of most significance to Jamaica is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, known to transmit dengue fever, chikungunya, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. Only female mosquitoes bite, doing so to get the blood they need for egg production. And therefore, only female mosquitoes transmit these viruses. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is what we call a timid feeder. So she's easily disturbed when feeding. It means that in one night, she may feed on several persons before she takes her complete blood meal. Each time she feeds, she secretes that substance. And in the secretion of the substance, the pathogen is passed on. So in one night, one female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to infect more than one person. The female Aedes aegypti mosquito is a prolific breeder. One female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to lay up to 200 eggs each time she lays her eggs. So one mosquito can populate an entire area. The lifespan of the mosquito is around three weeks and the entire cycle from egg to adult can occur in as little as seven to eight days. Female mosquitoes are ready to mate within a few hours after reaching their adult stage, and males are usually ready within 24 hours. This mosquito prefers cleaner waters for the female mosquitoes. She will lay her eggs in water, and for the Aedes, it would be water which is in and around the household. So while there are a number of things we can and should do to prevent being bitten, the most effective way to prevent the spread of diseases by these mosquitoes is to prevent their breeding. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is a mosquito that breeds in a containerized environment. 
they do not breed in rivers and drains, but they breed in containers that can be found in and around where persons dwell. So come with us and let us show you some of those breeding sites. This is a typical disc drainer that we find in most homes. And under most disc drainer is a tray that collects the water that comes off the dishes. And believe it or not, we have found breeding in several homes in these disc drainers. Yes. You can see that we have water that has settled. If this water does not evaporate quickly, it can lend itself to the breeding of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So you not only have to empty the disc drainer, but you have to scrub to remove those eggs. This is the typical saucer that we will find under a plant. The rain has reached and to fallen, it has collected water. And right now it is steaming with the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Do you have some of these in your home? Aedes aegypti prefers water that is a little bit on the cleaner side and it's found in a shaded environment. So what should we do with something like this? It's quite simple. You need to throw away the water. And if these containers are not being used, you have to keep them turned down so they're not able to collect water. If you have them under your plants, we ask that you bore holes in them so that it will not collect water. Do you have these in your homes? We find these in a lot of hotels and business places. And we ask those persons, check these bird baths or any ornamental things like these you have in your garden to ensure that they are not breeding the Aedes aegypti mosquito. There are things like this thrown down in person's backyard. Old equipment, old furniture, old fixtures that are taken from homes, especially during construction. These are also able to hold water. And if they're holding water and sit for a while in the environment, they will also breed mosquitoes. And so we have found breeding in wheelbarrows, in old refrigerator, in old things such as this one. And we ask persons, if you're throwing out these, please ensure that they are positioned in such a way that they will not collect water. Many persons, when they do have their drums, most times they have missed, they don't, the drums do not have any covers. So, there is a mesh cover which is so designed to replace the missing covers. It is lightweight and what we do is just simply slip it over and the mesh is so designed mosquitoes will not be able to go through this mesh to get to the water. So this is the ideal way. One of the benefits also of this mesh is that even when rain does fall, water will go right through it. This is a typical example where this we have is a plastic drum and we have a metal cover here which is not designed for this. Whilst in some practice the intent is good, there may be occasions in which it does not fit or sit properly and as a result you still have openings where mosquitoes can, can go right through and breathe. The mosquito is breeding right there in some very small places right around where you live. What is the habit we want you to develop? once every week, search for and destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Keep watching the magazine because later in the show we explore some other less obvious breeding grounds for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. You don't know, I sit down the other day there. Oh. And all the cobras in them, and we buy and sell marina. Yeah. One of them I sell a six pack for $1,000, and the next one I sell one for $200. So where you buy? I buy five of them for $1,000. Think them can't rob me. 
So Uncle Fancy, is the same thousand dollar you would spend to get the six? Seriously? Tell them again you my math brains. Math count. Math count. Sponsored by the Ministry of Education. A career in aviation, and as a military pilot in particular, can be a rewarding and fulfilling one. How so? Well, not only does it satisfy one's childhood fantasy of flying, it also helps in critical areas of a country's development. So let's take a look at the opportunity you can grasp in this high-flying field. Are you one of those persons who's been fascinated by flying since you were a child? Picture yourself as a career pilot. Maybe an engineer in the aeronautical industry. Well, if it's the pilot you see, then the chance of you realizing your childhood dream might not be out of reach. The Jamaica Military Aviation School, JMAS, established in 2006, is where you want to be. It came as a result of over 35 years of training with the Canadian Forces that ended in 06, and we used that opportunity to establish our own uh, flying school here in Jamaica. It's not the first time that military flight training was done here, but uh, it's the first time in over 30 odd years. At JMAS, Jamaican and international military students are trained to Canadian standards. Lieutenant Melissa Sinclair was the first female graduate among a batch of three from the new school. Our instructors, from our commandant all the way down, chief standards officer, they're all trained in Canada, Portage Lapeer, and that's first world training. And the JDF pilots on a whole, we are, our standards team come from Canada every year, and we're looked at our proficiency, and we have to be on par with them. So our standards are very high. The other pioneers were Lieutenant Victor Dawkins and undergraduate Lieutenant Osmar Fiddler. It feels very good doing your solos. So that, those were the high points for me, pretty much. Going out by myself, trying, getting comfortable with the aircraft. I'll encourage every and any young man who um, can grab the opportunity to join the JDF. Um, separate and apart from being a pilot, there are other opportunities that you can, you know, use as a stepping stone and, you know, excel. The opportunity is there, you just need to apply and then pass the necessary test. Apart from being technicians and engineers, an aircraft pilot, whether of a jet or chopper, is probably one of the most admired job titles, be it in the private or public sector. The civilian pilot flies commercial passenger aircraft, but the military pilot's mission is to serve his country. Often we see helicopters patrolling the skies. They could be airlifting the injured during a disaster, providing air coverage for ground troops, or providing security operations. These are just a few of the duties of a military pilot. So how can you fulfill your dream of becoming part of this experience? Someone coming out of high school, for example, um, has to be, well, under 23 years of age, right? Five CXCs and two A-levels, or the CAPE equivalent, and they would make their application to the JDF to join as a military officer, expressing interest specifically in joining the JDF Air Wing. If successful at that, then they would be put into the system where they will be qualified as a military officer in the Jamaica Defence Force. From that point on, uh, again, we would take them over at the flight school here and take them through a pre-ab initial course. And what that simply is, is just allowing us to make an assessment of whether or not you have the hands and feet, the, the coordination skills that are required for flying. Successful at that, you will be loaded onto the formal flying training program. And that will take you right up to the end where you'll be qualified on either multi-engine aircraft or helicopters. Although the path to WING's status is not an easy one, persons who are prepared and have the necessary skills and attitudes are likely to fly high at the end of the course. 
The latest addition to Jamaica's curriculum vitae in aeronautics is the Caribbean Aerospace College. The college aims to produce world-class aircraft maintenance engineers. So if your passion lies not in the air, but beneath the hood of a jet plane, then this college is for you. If you believe you've got what it takes to become an aviator or to maintain an aircraft, then you need to contact the Jamaica Defense Force or visit the website at www.jdfmil.org. A healthy and educated people living in a clean, natural environment, reducing crime, improving the justice system and governance, building a prosperous economy. It's not just a vision, it's reality. Learn about the plan. Join the vision. My country, Jamaica, has a rich heritage and is very unique. If we all pull together, we can make it the place of choice to live, work, raise family, and to do business. For more information on Vision 2030, call the Planning Institute of Jamaica or visit vision2030.gov.jm, your parish library, school library, or the Jamaica Information Service. Here now are a few of the stories making news this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. I will ensure that government is coordinated and strategically directed. That decisions are taken quickly, that targets are set and met, and that the nation is informed, and that everyone under my appointment is held to account for their actions or lack thereof. Newly installed Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave that commitment on Thursday as he was sworn into office in a ceremony at King's House. He pledged to carry out key commitments made to Jamaicans. Our government will ease your tax burden, but you must invest and spend wisely. Use the additional money to acquire a house for your family or improve the one you already have. Or buy Jamaican goods. Mr. Holness also committed his government to continuing key social protection programs such as tuition-free education and no user fee access to health care. However, we will encourage you and enable you to save in a bond for your children's education and in a national health insurance scheme for your health care. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness hit the ground running Friday morning, taking up office at Jamaica House. Among his first order of business was perusing a report from the National Water Commission as he affirmed that his government was serious about providing water to the people. The Planning Institute of Jamaica PIOJ has reported that the country's economic outlook for the current quarter of January to March 2016 is positive. We note that the economy has continued its slow but encouraging recovery with growth in both the goods producing and services industry and with increasing employment. The PIOJ's Director General says real gross domestic product for the period is estimated to grow within the region of 0.5 to 1.5 percent. The PIOJ is also predicting GDP growth in this range for the entire 2015-2016 fiscal year ending March 31. The new national minimum wage of $6,200 took effect on March 1. At the same time, the minimum wage for industrial security guards moved from $8,198 per 40-hour work week to $8,854. Their firearm premium allowance, dog handlers premium allowance and laundry allowance also increased. The health minister says the virology lab at the University of the West Indies should begin local testing for the Zika virus next week. 
Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Winston De La Haye says the equipment has already been purchased and the health workers have been trained. In the meantime, the ministry is encouraging persons to continue destroying mosquito breeding sites and protect themselves from mosquito bites. Barracks Road Primary in Montego Bay, St. James has a new classroom block to accommodate students from grades 4 to 6. Valued at $25 million, the new classroom block will also accommodate students in the school's special literacy program. We really needed to spe make special provision for these students. Now they have a room with a finely bred teacher and her assistant who will better address the needs of these children who pose special learning needs. St. Mary, St. Anne, Trelawney, St. James and Hanover students will be able to sit their CSEC Spanish oral exams free of cost. This as the Overseas Examinations Council and the Ministry of Education have received over $1.1 million from the Spanish Jamaica Foundation to pay for the exams. We believe in supporting access to quality educational opportunities and we believe that Spanish literacy opens doors to all sorts of opportunities for students to make a positive impact on the national as well as the international stage. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Education will be launching a new mathematics, science and technical vocation scholarship program in September. We will be awarding 200 um, math education scholarships, 200 science education scholarships, and 100 technical vocational education scholarships. We are currently in dialogue with our teachers' colleges to review program length and so on so that these students will be available to the system within the next three years. And finally, the Jamaica Aid Support for Life has launched a media campaign to end violence against women and girls and raise awareness about the matter of violence against women being one of the factors that contribute to females' vulnerability to contracting HIV. HIV risk and violence, is, it's both direct and indirect. And we know directly because through forced intercourse with an HIV-infected individual leads to HIV transmission. And indirectly, because of the psychosocial stress that is put onto the woman, and it often leads to later engagement in high-risk behaviors. The tagline for the media campaign is hashtag zero vol, zero HIV. And those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Jamaica, have to protect the life where we live so you know say so we have to think smart. Joe, well this is Chino and we need to talk to the youth them. Be careful of uh, your friend them. People who really care about you and check for you not going to put you in a situation where you can end up going to prison or end up losing your life. So you need to stay focused, stay in school, work hard and don't fall on a friend. And remember, a gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Earlier in the show, you saw why the Aedes aegypti mosquito has become a major problem for public health. The threat is constantly lurking. And we'll now show you more of the breeding places to target in the fight to protect ourselves from mosquito bites. We're looking for any container or anything which can hold water. It doesn't need a lot of water for that mosquito to deposit its eggs. Um, very shallow quantity of water they can deposit in. The rain has fallen and this has collected water. And if it is allowed to sit in the environment for a couple of days, the Aedes aegypti will breed on it. This is a plastic over a pail and the water is in the, on the plastic. This is a beautiful breeding site for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. We have a similar one right here. There's water on the top of this container and the Aedes aegypti mosquito 
will breed in it. Once the water begins to evaporate and she has a space to lay her eggs, she will lay her eggs and this will then become a breeding site. Turn it over. We do appreciate that roof gutters are very necessary in some areas that do not have pipe water, so it helps to collect the rainwater when it comes. However, if these roof drains become blocked by trash or other things, then it makes the water stagnant and it becomes a major breeding site for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So it's important if you have these roof gutters that you keep them clear that the water is able to run. Even among your plants, we have plants that are, because of how the leaves overlap each other, they are able to collect water. And Aedes aegypti loves to breed in those environments. We suggest that persons do. If you think you love these plants and you want them, put them in pots. So when they do collect water, it's able to, you're able to pick up the pots, drain them out and put them down. Because as it is right now, it's very difficult for us to get rid of the water and they will just continue to be in the environment as breeding sites. This is a tile which has been discarded, but it's just in the backyard. And what we have now is apparently rainwater has now settled inside there and we have it breeding the ADs are back to the breeding inside here. It can be used as an enclosure for your plants, like a potted plant situation. So what we'll show you now is how we can have it filled with dirt that will ensure that when rain does fall, mosquitoes will not breed in it. There's also a method of stacking the tires so that they will not collect water. We advise the tire shop owners to, for each tire that they get to punch a hole in each of the tires. Once that is done, they can stock them in this platting form. So they have one row going in a particular direction and then another set going in the opposite direction and they will continue with this. What this does, it allows the water to be directed towards where the hole is bored. So even if the rain comes and water goes in, the water will not settle but go out. We know that most churches have what is called a baptismal pool. And we have found baptismal pools to be a major breeding site for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So what is it that churches should do? We recommend that all baptismal pools be covered properly so that the mosquito will not have access to it for breeding. Sometimes the pools are shaped very funny and so it's very difficult to cover. In those instances, we ask persons to empty the pool at least once per week. And after emptying the pool, we ask that you scrub the sides to ensure that you have dislodged all the eggs. So we saw many sites that were breeding the Aedes aegypti mosquito today. And we saw that these sites were found in and around our homes, business places. And if we do not deal with these breeding sites, they are going to continue to be there, posing a risk for the transmission of diseases because they are breeding the Aedes aegypti, the mosquito. So you must take action to rid your environment of those sites. So what is it that we're asking you to do? We want you to make this a habit. Once a week, search for and destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And that brings us to the end of today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. We value your feedback, so keep the link. Tell us what you thought of the show. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm or hit us up on Twitter at GIS News. Also, click on our website, gis.gov.jm, for the very latest government information. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to take care of your health, eat well, exercise, get adequate rest, and join us again tomorrow for more information you can use. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.